recently added to Warframe are three types of Archon Shards, able to provide semi-permanent bonuses to your Warframes. This video will focus on the Amber Shards, broadly labelled as the Utility ones. What are the options, how do they compare, and which frames could really benefit from them? I'm Nick Engineer, let's solve a practical problem. In the previous video on Azure Shards, I covered how many combinations you can make with these shards. Check that out if you haven't already. With Amber Shards, we once again have 5 bonuses to choose from, this time with broader overall application rather than the mostly defense options of the Azure Shards. Plus Energy on Spawn is a direct alternative to the mod preparation. This, as it says, will fill up 30% of your maximum energy when you spawn, or 45% if you use a Talford Shard. This applies at the start of every mission, when you revive your own Warframe at the cost of Affinity, or when you start a new zone of Sanctuary Onslaught. At first glance it may look like 3 Amber Shards still won't get you to 100% energy on spawn, but you have to remember that all Warframes start with at least a little bit of energy. Every Warframe has a base starting energy, as low as 50 energy for many frames, while some Warframes have as much as 150 starting energy. On top of that, Every Warframe starts with an additional 5 energy per capacity granted by their aura, including the effect of polarity, and a further 5 energy for every unused point of capacity in the Warframe modding screen. So take the example of a Wisp which has 150 starting energy. You apply an aura with a matching polarity for plus 14 capacity, giving another 70 starting energy, and then the final build uses 70 out of 74 capacity, granting another 20 starting energy. This Wisp, as a result, starts with 240 energy, assuming her energy max is high enough to handle that. Taking all this into account then, you do not need to get 100% energy on spawn from your shards in order to have your maximum on spawn. Compare your starting energy to your maximum to determine the max starting energy bonus you can benefit from. The equation for this maximization is 100% minus starting energy divided by max energy. Looking back to the Wisp, with their 240 starting energy and Prime Flow for 850 max energy, that Wisp would need no more than plus 73% max energy on spawn, achievable with one normal and one Tau Forged Amber Shard. It's because of this same not needing 100% mechanic that I don't fully rank up the preparation mod, as doing so is literally a waste of capacity. And do be aware that plus energy on spawn cannot be used on Hildren and Lavos for obvious reasons, and should never be used on Harrow as his passive already spawns him in with max energy. Instead it's most useful on Warframes that have multiple abilities they want to cast immediately at the start of a mission. Alternatively, if you're only a short mission and you don't want to mod around picking up energy during the mission. Starting energy on Wukong for example can give you enough Cloudwalker cast to cover an entire spy mission without having to stop to recharge. Next, we have the option to increase the effectiveness of health orbs. This only affects the health, so it doesn't translate to more energy through equilibrium. This will turn a 25 health orb into 50 health, or 62.5 health with a Tau Forge shard. At the max of 5 normal shards, a normal health orb can grant you 150 health in a single pickup, while the mega health orbs from Proteus Dispensary would give up to 600 health. This can effectively turn consistent sources of health orbs like Dispensary, Blazing Chakram and Desecrate into reliable sources of healing, but I wouldn't rate it more than niche overall. If you're playing a Warframe which doesn't generate these health orbs, I would suggest instead looking at the Azure Shards for healing over time instead, granting you the same extra boost you can get from one health orb in just 5 seconds passively. Related Amber Shard option lets you gain more energy from energy orbs, acting as a watered down version of Arcane Energize. Normally, an energy orb restores 25 energy, or 50 if you obtain it from a locker or crate. With the Amber Shard, this can be increased to 37.5 and 75 energy respectively, or with Tau Forge, 43.8 and 87.5 energy respectively. By stacking 5 normal Amber Shards, you can reach a max of 87.5 energy from normal energy orbs, or 175 energy from crate pickups. By comparison, Arcane Energize will occasionally give you up to 150 extra energy when picking up an energy orb. It has a cooldown of 15 seconds and only a 60% chance of proccing. Ignoring the cooldown, this means Arcane Energize grants 115 average energy per orb, or 140 for crate orbs. On the other hand, Arcane Energize also applies to all allies within 15 meters, takes up just a single arcane slot, provides a bonus revive, and can be applied to all of your Warframes simultaneously without any bile cost. 
While the Amber Shard offers fewer bonuses, they still offer a lot of energy and due to the always on no RNG nature, 5 shards will still replace Arcane Energize effectively enough. If you're able to produce consistent energy orbs, such as using Spectra Rage with the Spectra Siphon Augment, the energy income with these shards can be obscenely high. On top of the general energy boost, because this is a boost your energy pickup, the shard bonus continues to work even when you're using toggle abilities like Equinox's Mend and Maim, whereas other sources like Xenerix Wellspring or Trinity's Energy Vampire wouldn't apply. On the topic of Xenerix, the pickup bonus is applied before Xenerix Energy Pulls passive, meaning the maximum 50% bonus energy you restore with Xenerix is also applied to the Enhanced Orb effect. Again, with 5 normal Amber Shards, this means gaining passively 8.75 energy per second per orb picked up, increased from the 2.5 energy per second of an unboosted orb. In a nutshell, the plus energy orb effectiveness is a huge tool for maintaining energy economy and can open up the arcane slot you would have used on Energize for something else desirable and cheaper. Any caster frame struggling with lower energy income can benefit from this shard option. If you're already good for health and energy though, the penultimate option on the list is a bonus to casting speed. Two normal Amber Shards will match the speed given by the Natural Talent mod or Maduro's Power Transfer ability, reducing the length of a huge number of Warframe ability animations. This can prove helpful for frames with particularly long animations like Harrow, Caliban and Necros. The bonuses from multiple sources stack additively, however as it's a casting speed increase rather than a casting time decrease, you can't reduce casting time down to zero. Each extra reduction will have a smaller and smaller effect. In effect, you can think of casting speed as fire rate for abilities. They don't get any stronger or any cheaper. They don't reach further or last longer. You just spend less time putting out the effect and that's it. If you don't find the ability animations on a frame are holding you back, then it is safe to skip this choice. However, the quality of life it can bring, even just reducing the time you're vulnerable, such as when casting Revenant's Mesmer skin, can still make all the difference. Finally then, we have a bonus to Parkour Velocity. Parkour Velocity refers to the speed you gain from performing manoeuvres such as rolling or bullet jumping. This makes it a direct boost to your movement speed, perhaps more so than sprint speed, given the prevalence of bullet jumping especially. There are already a number of ways to get Parkour Velocity bonuses. You have mods including Endurance Drift for plus 12%, Amar's Anguish gives 15% to bullet jumps, Mobilize 20% to bullet jumps, Firewalker and its variants gives 24.2% to bullet jumps, and Proton Pulse can give plus 100% to bullet jumps. The Arcane Arcane Consequence will also give up to plus 60% parkour velocity, lasting 18 seconds for the low cost of just one headshot. It doesn't even have to be a kill. Also from the Helmet system, Infested Mobility can be cast for a plus 30% parkour velocity bonus at base strength. In comparison then, Amber Shards will give you plus 15% parkour velocity per shard up to 75% with 5 normal shards or potentially 112.5% with all Tau Forged if you wait long enough to get them. That means it would take 4 shards to replace 1 max ranked arcane, with the added benefit of no longer needing to trigger it. That said, 1 Tau Forged shard would be more effective than almost every mod available for parkour and would affect more than just bullet jumps. The biggest users of parkour bonuses are those Warframes whose movement becomes limited when using certain abilities. Ivara whilst using Prowl, Nyx whilst using Absorb with the Assimilate Augment, and Mesa whilst using Peacemaker with the Mesa's Waltz Augment. Chroma is also a runner-up candidate for parkour bonuses, owing to his passive that allows him to do two bullet jumps rather than one in a single leap. It may be a pretty bland passive, but then it's not like he was doing much anyway. Frames that wouldn't benefit from parkour velocity are the ones usually skipping parkour. Gauss is usually running everywhere, Wukong prefers being a cloud, and Titania is busy recreating the B-movie script through interpretive dance. So to sum it up neatly, plus energy on spawn is great for frames who need energy straight away, or to allow you to do a whole mission without worrying about energy generation. This is useful for speedrun frames like Wukong and Titania, or for ESO nukes like Vault and Mirage. Improved energy orb efficiency can be a replacement for Arcane Energize to maintain your energy income and boost the effectiveness of Xenerix passive. Basically, any energy hungry build can use this. Casting speed is a quality of life bonus to almost any Warframe, but is especially potent on longer cast times like with Harrow, Caliban, and Necros. It can replace the Natural Talent mod or the Majuri Focus passive. Parkour Velocity is a powerful movement bonus and can be a replacement for Arcane Consequence. 
It's especially useful to park or rely on frames like Ivara, Nyx and Mesa, or just to make Chroma's passive feel more important. And lastly, the health orb efficiency is the odd one out of limited overall use. Again, remember, the bonus doesn't boost the effect of Equilibrium. In terms of utility, Amber Shards really do have something for everyone. If you do get stuck for choice, you can join me in appreciating a build I've come to call Yeet Loki. It does exactly what it says on the tin. I hope you found this video helpful and learned something new. If you have, make sure to subscribe for more as it goes live. And as always, boost parkour, yeet Loki, and fight well, Tenno.